Hello lifers, PJ here and in this episode of Midlife Models we're going to be looking at some of the tools of the trade. So let's get started. In this episode I'm going to base it around a Land Rover Safari. This is a Matchbox series. Made by Leslie in, in England. So what we're going to cover is what it takes to remove the chassis and what tools are required. So there's a few parts to this. And the first thing to consider is removing the flange of the river. And after doing some investigation and looking at some of the other YouTubers sites, what you're looking at is getting a drill bit that is one mil bigger than the size of the river. So you're looking at something like, let me get some vernier gauges. Give or take, oh, there we go, this is a 4mm drill. And that will just about cover the flange of this rivet. Now, you could use a drill press, you could use a hand tool, but if you're, if you're in the UK, and uh, you look close to a town, you're going to be bound to have an Aldi or a Littles. Now, I don't get sponsored by Aldi or Littles, I have no affiliation. But for a hobby tool, this Parkside brand is um, it's pretty good. I've got uh, a number of these, these tools whether it be uh, their version of a rotary tool or this cordless drill and they're never going to be an industry standard but for hobbies these little tools are pretty good so using the cordless drill I set it up in a little mobile, a uh, little mini vise that I can mount to the desktop, and I drill out the flange of the rivet with a drill that's, as I say, approximately one mil bigger than the rivet head. So once that's done, what you're then looking at is drilling out the post behind this rivet. Now it's not as wide as the rivet's head. And what you're looking to do is to use something along the lines of a 1.6 millimeter drill to drill out the center post to a depth four or five mil. And if I've got one set up, this is a different brand of cordless drill. This is a Titan. But as you can see on this one I've got a 1.6 millimeter drill and it's set with some insulating tape to a depth of approximately five millimeters. 
Once I've hit that mask, once I've hit that um, insulating tape, I know that I'm at some depth deep enough that I can uh, use a tap to put a thread into the uh, post of the vehicle. So once that's done, so you've removed the flange of the rivet, you've drilled down the rivet post. You're then going to need to thread it. Now you can use a tap and dicer, but um, what I managed to find, and this was on eBay, was a handheld chuck. So what this does is just give you that little bit of extra control using a brand of multi-purpose oil before you uh, actually start tapping the post. This gives you a lot of control over how deep you go and how fast you're going. So that's how I would tap the rivet post once it's been drilled ready for a, a bolt. Now, one thing I've struggled with or struggled to find is what bolt or thread I should be using for these uh, restorations. And this is a this is an M2 bolt, very small. It's almost like a uh, a lap the, the kind of screws or bolts you find in a laptop, or you know, if you're replacing a hard drive or something of that nature. And if you remove Sorry, if you um, drill that rivet head flange too big and you put in this little M2 bolt, it will go straight through. So depending on the size of the rivet head flange and the drill you're using, and the depth you go in and the width of that hole depends on what size bolt you put in there. What I have found in my shed is this little washer. But I haven't got a lot of these, so I'm currently looking at sourcing where to get these from. Um, if you're doing one of the, um, just grab this one, this is a Corgi Toys Porsche Audi, and this is a 136 scale, but you can see from this model that the rivet heads are a lot wider which affords you the possibility of using a wider drill bit and a wider, a wider thread cutter and ultimately a wider bolt. So depending on the model that you're making or restoring depends on the size of the bolt that you're going to be putting in there. And it's always worth doing a bit of research to check because no doubt if you research on YouTube somebody has done one of these models and they don't always go into depth about the materials they've used to reconstruct the restoration 
which is something I'm trying to do is to add details but it gives you some good guidance so I've got a couple of threads uh, sorry a couple of taps one's an M2 one's an M4 and they're used depending on as I say the size of the model that you're restoring now the likes of um, Lidl and Aldi um, Screwfix, Toolstation you name it, eBay are great places for sourcing uh, tools that you may use or you may need so one of the tools that, I'll, that I've come to rely on quite heavily recently is this automatic punch center punch and as you can see from this model there are a couple of points in the rivets where well, this is a remnant of the casting when it was first made but what you can do with one of these automatic center punches is locate the center of the rivet push it down and it will hen out, enhance that rivet head to give you a drilling point so a center punch is a good tool to have again if you go to the likes of Aldi or Buddles I'm only saying, like, saying these two companies because of their budget tool range <coughs> and some of these I've picked up over the years but these little precision tool kits they're not going to cost you I don't know more than a fiver at most but they've got some very small bits for the holder so these are ideal for these little M2 bolts and this particular kit is magnetised as well so a little precision screwdriver set is ideal as well I did have a uh, smaller version of the handheld chuck. These are great. I mean, you can use this in conjunction with the bits in this toolkit as well. Same with this one. And uh, I think these two I found on eBay. So if you have a look for either a handheld drill or a handheld chuck, I'm sure you'll find them. I've already mentioned uh, the size of threads, etc. And uh, Magnuson. I have no affiliation with Magnuson, but this was either a, um, I'm sure this was screw fix to be honest. But these are. Uh, these calipers, these Vernier calipers, especially the digital version, are invaluable for measuring parts, threads, uh, drill bits, etc. And again, these 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 tools that I'm showing you, they're not uh, they're not going to cost you a fortune. But what you can do is build up your kit over a period of time. Uh, when the special buys are on, just go down and have a look around. If there's anything that takes your fancy that that you think can help you in your restoration hobby, and it's not costing you a lot of money, then it's an ideal time to buy. Uh, what else have we got? Uh, a rotary tool. I did mention that. I did mention that. Um, Littles use this, do this Parkside um, brand. So here's a rotary tool. I know, probably about 15 quid. And this is 
that's a gun. For this kind of hobby, when you're only um, using these intermittently, you know, it's not been, it's not used on an industrial scale, they're ideal for cleaning up, um, cleaning up chassis. You know, for this kind of thing, a wire brush attachment in, in the in the rotary tool, and away you go. And they do um, restock these kind of tools on a fairly regular basis, and even come up with uh, refillable accessories. Um, there we go. There's various types of attachments and grinding stones, some sanding wheels, wire brushes, all in these kits. So, you know, when you're doing your shopping, especially in these tools when money's now getting short. Keep your eye out for these um, these little deals. Um, I don't use, I don't spend a lot of money, uh, even with the um, collecting of vehicles. Just go on eBay. Uh, I've picked up kits. Uh, sorry, I've picked up job lots of vehicles for no more than ten pound. But you've got to know when to draw the line. I've seen people selling 10 cars for £150. Uh, just buy enough to tide you over and keep your hobby moving forward. If you're just starting out, you only want two or three cars that have not cost you a lot of money that you can practice on. You're going to be spending enough money on um, paint going forward and possibly replacement parts. So don't spend a, a lot of money on um, buying these vehicles. You know, you can go to um, a charity shop, a car boot sale, or bring and buy, put the word out to your friends and family that you're looking for these type of vehicles, these, to these toy cars. It doesn't matter whether they're Corgi, Dinky, Matchbox, etc. Just gives you something to practice on. It's all, it's all good fun, especially in, the, in as I say, in these times when we're all on lockdown. You can buy these kind of things on eBay. These job lots and deliver to your house. You haven't got to leave. You can get most of your kit from eBay, Amazon. Um, just do a Google search. There are plenty of. Car, toy car restoration sites where you can get decals, replacement parts. Obviously, the more popular the model, the more chance you've got of, um, of getting parts for it. But if um, if all you want to do is practice, don't spend a fortune. Just get something like one of these, and you can part restore it as well. If you're gonna. If you're going to drill this post oil and replace it with a screw, but you can't source the um, interior plastic windows or the interior seats, etc., what this does is it affords you the, uh, the option of removing the screw, taking the chassis off, and putting the part in to a later date. So not everything has to be done uh, instantly. You know, it's a hobby, just have fun with it, don't make it a job. So there you go, some um, some hints and tips on tools. I'll do another, I'll do a part two to this with other tools that I use, um, including you know, airbrushes and files and glues and paints. It can be a never ending list if you're not careful. Uh, but it's it's meant to be fun. 
it's meant to be uh, a hobby that you can enjoy and you can start off on a fairly low budget. So there you go, uh, hints and tips, tools of the trade. Uh, thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next vid. Bye.